My name is Anton Yulinsev. I'm CEO of Gaijin Entertainment and we're developing Warfunder, uh, next generation online game on different platforms. And we do support virtual reality, Oculus Rift, and Morpheus project as well. Okay. That answers my first question. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to ask you when did you decide, when did you decide to make uh, Warfunder and Star Conflict uh, Oculus Rift uh, compatible? Uh, so, uh, we were, me and, and creative director of the company, are big fans of virtual reality as an idea as a whole. So we were looking into that long before Oculus Rift have started their Kickstarter campaign. Uh, there were no real uh, good uh, consumer solution on the market. Uh, Oculus Rift is, is still not out yet, but uh, we were making things about that. We were supporting Track Ear. Tracker is a head tracking uh, system. Okay. Uh, it's long time, uh, long time on the market. We were supporting stereo 3D as uh, on a, on a monitor, uh, Nvidia, Nvidia, Nvidia stereo solution. And so we were looking into that long before it actually had started. So when Oculus have started their Kickstarter campaign, uh, we backed it on a Kickstarter like. A lot of other people have done, of course. Uh, I was like uh, six hours after launch of campaign, which means we had to wait for our dev kit two months mm -hmm. uh, after they start delivering because uh, there were not enough uh, kids. And then guys from Oculus Rift uh, have contacted us as well because uh, we implemented support on the game. We were one of the earliest game who, who, who done that support for DK1 it was available on the market so uh, because they track such things they contacted us and then we start work, started working together on a virtual reality thing because one thing is you need really good uh, hardware and the other thing you need content for, for that hardware uh, all things are tied together there's no need in, in hardware without the content, there's no need for content without the hardware, so uh, it, it, it was natural we were working together on, so guys uh, provided us a uh, decade two before it was uh, available and uh, we were working on the marketing side on the exhibitions like that one, for example on this one we also have a, a, a Oculus Rift available uh, on the World Fund book, I mean. So, uh, answering the question when it was long before even yeah. Oculus Rift has started. And of course, and of just a logical continuation. Yeah, so and at the moment, the only two um, hardware, uh, virtual reality hardware, which are suitable for customers is uh, Oculus Rift and Project Morpheus. Both have their cons and pros. Um, and uh, Mostly, Project Morpheus is the only one which supports it on PS4, which will be supported on PS4, I guess. So we are support because we are on PS4 as well. We will support uh, Project Morpheus. Oculus Rift uh, doing very um, impressive things right now uh, with the Decade 3, which is not yet available. But uh, and personally, I think that will be the new era of hardcore gaming. Uh, and so, um, did the virtual reality adaptation went well, or were there any unexpected uh, problems? There were a lot of technical and uh, logical issues with that. Logical is uh, most most notable is UI, obviously, mm -hmm. because virtual reality is all about representing reality. Most of UIs are something not in a game world. It's something not real, I mean real, in terms of games, world. it's all hearts, all UIs, all menus, appears on screen like they're not part of the world, which is okay for 2D monitor, but not good for virtual reality because it spoils the thing. The most uh, usable and uh, working solution in the moment is to put the UIs on the uh, sphere or cylinder around the uh, player and allow the, them to look uh, around and, and check it. Uh, also, it, 
worth mentioning that the current resolution is not good enough to just make a small UI. Like it's not reasonable to represent monitor with UIs in the uh, virtual reality because the resolution is not enough. So you can you cannot do that. You, you can only make a, uh, UIs big, big. I mean, logically big, like the, on the big uh, sphere around you. So uh, that's the most biggest uh, logical uh, issue in any game so I, I guess in the future most of the uh, solutions to that will be avoiding UIs as much as possible just not making them uh, but in the moment uh, especially for a game like War Thunder with a lot of UIs and a lot of stuff it's uh, not easy so uh, that was the most hardest logical uh, thing and uh, the same games too control as well because mouse is not I mean in the UI you want to select the menu check menus and stuff like that mouse is really not the, the best device for because you can easily stop looking at the mouse cursor I'm not even talking about that you have to put your hand on it but even with your hand on it you can lost it you can look in the other direction and then you don't see where your mouse cursor is so um, it's still an issue to be solved in the game itself uh, because we simulate aircraft and tanks it's much easier because it's very natural when you have a fly stick uh, you see your hands on your uh, fly stick in virtual reality which is the same as you're doing in real life so it's really really natural and really good uh, so the most notable problem is UI as for technical issues, there are a lot of them. Because before that, before virtual reality, the com most common solution to achieve good frame rates was to increase latency. Drivers have a free frames, usually typically free frames, can be two or four uh, frames ahead of rendering. Uh, game itself can provide one to two frames of latency, just preparing the next frame. And render the, the previous frame. So, when, but you want, when you do that in virtual reality, that means that you have motion sickness mm -hmm. because the the bigger latencies, the worse experiences. So you want to minimize that. You want to make the uh, latency as low as possible. Uh, there are things that can be done on the driver side, tweaking the drivers of the video card. And there are things that can be done on the game side, technical. Wise. Also, there's a, a prediction thing which is need to be tweaked because even even if you have a zero frame latency, like we do have an Oculus Rift booth right now, we just remove all the latencies. But even if you have zero frames of latency, you still have one frame rendering on the, on the screen. Which, if you have 95 frames per second, like Oculus, I um, know oh, they have 75, 70 frames. Yes, yeah. yes. So when you have 75 frames per second, that gives you additional uh, 10, 12, 12 milliseconds of latency. So you need to compensate that. It's called prediction. Uh, it can be tweaked. And uh, but the thing is that prediction only works when you do predictable things. When you start shaking, uh, like doing very sharp movements of your head, uh, it stops working. It, moreover, it start spoiling you. So things like that. The only solution is to actually increase frame rate on both hardware and software side. So the game and uh, the device should be rendering at 100 frames per second or 120 frames per second, which gives us the next technical challenge, because uh, most of the games are not capable of running on 120 frames per second, even with latency, with the when they uh, can use this one frame uh, ahead rendering latency but we, without it is especially uh, especially challenging so uh, and we are talking about ideally 4k resolution with 120 frames per second so that's right now the hardware is not supporting it but as soon as I, I, and this will will happen I mean that's the main reason people would need 4k resolution in general because it doesn't make sense on a, on a right now on most of uh, monitors to have 4K resolution. It's more like a technical 
bleeding age of technology and geek style, not not real consumer style. But for virtual reality, it makes a lot of sense to have 4K resolution uh, because it's it's still even less than full HD on a 2D monitor. Even 4K resolution in two eyes is a little bit less, but it's okay. So 4K resolution with 120 frames per second gives us a lot of challenges on the software side, on the hardware side, on the, even uh, wires, because right now there's no, you need two H, uh, HDMI cable to get that. Not one HDMI cable is not enough. It's not providing the uh, required bandwidth of, of the data. So for 120 uh, frames per second. So that that will give a lot of a whole new level of cha technical challenges for both hardware and software side. And before those challenges uh, will be fixed, uh, virtual reality won't be able to replace the uh, monitors even for gaming because the resolution won't be enough and the quality won't be enough and the motion sickness won't be solved. So it, it moves in that direction. The latest DK3 was already presented with a high resolution and uh, frame rates. So things are moving in that direction, but not not solved yet. Um, yeah, so the uh, next question would be um, there, are, there are already a few uh, flight simulations uh, and uh, war games and uh, space space combat space dog, space dog fight games uh, for the Oculus Rift. Uh, yet, yet, yet uh, really, the Oculus Rift community really loves uh, War Thunder and Star Conflict. Uh, what do you think are the strengths uh, of your games? Uh? Uh, first of all, both games provide a first person side view. It's very important. Yes. For virtual reality, third person side view looks like you are playing not in a flight simulation or spaceship simulation, but uh, operator simulation, the guy who is flying with a camera behind the plane, which is not fun. So the game should have first person side perspective. And the, uh, it should benefit from it. So when you play first person side, you should get a better experience than if you play third person side. So uh, typically games do not do that. Either they don't have first person side uh, at all or they don't benefit from it. So uh, that's one of the point and the second point the game needs to be fun itself. I mean it can be, it, it, you can easily make a, some simulation uh, not easily, but you can make some simulation game, which won't be fun. It will be, it will be more a d demo than you need. To, the game need to be fun anyway, regardless of is it for virtual reality or not. It still have to be fun. So, I guess the two main strengths is we are really adapted for virtual reality. We have first person side perspective. We try to uh, not to have a big latency. We remove the latency as as, as much as possible. And at the same time, games are fun. That's an important point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do, do you know how much players are playing with the, 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 the Rift uh, on your games? I don't know. You don't know? Or, or, or the proportion compared how to the world? Yeah, I understand. Of course, it's a, uh, as far as I know, there was only 100,000 DK1 mm -hmm. uh, for Cross Rift sold. So, not more than that, obviously. Yes. But actually, we had we haven't even. Uh, I mean, this data can be achieved, but I've never looked into it. Right now, it's still uh, it's still not consumers. Uh, yeah. So it's a glimpse of future. What, how many people are playing? It, it doesn't ma ma matter much if it will be all one hundred thousand people or if it will be uh, only one thousand people. Uh, it's still, it's still not the the final level of hardware, not the final piece of hardware. Even I'm not sure if you know, but between DK1 and DK2, they have changed the SDK significantly. So it was really hard for us to adapt for both of them. We tried, but uh, frankly speaking, our our main priority was to adapt it for latest one. So which means that a lot of people could probably uh, lost the opportunity to play. On DK1, but it doesn't make sense for us to. We we we, we tried, but it, 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 the main priority is still to be ready for the 
consumer's product when it will be on the market. So we try to be there. And the same goes to a lot of things like UIs. You can make a bigger UIs for DK ones for them to be readable, resolution is lower. Uh, or you can make a, a better UIs for DK2, or you can make an even better UIs for DK3. And that makes sense because we want to be ready for consumer's product, not for current DK, uh, DK1 or DK2. We do that because that's the latest consumer product we do have. DK2 in the moment, DK3 is coming. But we don't want to answer your question. We don't want to adapt for as many uh, virtual reality devices as possible. None of them are, frankly speaking, none of them are ready for uh, mass market, yeah. for, for consumer to market. So we try to be there when it will be on, a, on the consumer's market and not to utilize that and make some geek DMers or something like that. I wanted to know too, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the experience is, di uh, is different uh, whereas you are on the screen or you are on the TK. So uh, will there be a, a different uh, part of the game uh, where only people with uh, the Rift will play together? It doesn't together? make sense. It doesn't make sense? It doesn't make sense because uh, Almost everybody prefer to play. Our game already has enough uh, difficulty levels. I mean, more fun. They have simulation difficulty, realistic difficulty, arcade difficulty. Even in arcade difficulty, when you play arcade difficulty, it's more fun to play first pers person perspective with Oculus Rift. With the simulation difficulty, the hardest one, Oculus Rift really gives you advantage. So we don't we don't need to make a separate uh, match for, for those with Oculus Rift because they already have advantage of those who, who don't so those who don't can buy Oculus Rift I mean, I mean when it will be available on the market and buy and uh, have their part of fun it's the same like supporting Trekir Trekir already gives you a little bit of advantage of those who don't have it but we don't separate them in matchmaking oh, if you want to you can go and buy it I mean, I understand it's expensive, but that's simulation part of the game is all about be as realistic as possible. So it does make sense to separate them. And, uh, Sorry, guys, we have another meeting. Okay. So, okay. One last question. One, uh, I wanted to know. You mentioned uh, earlier that uh, you worked with uh, Oculus to port your game uh, for virtual reality. Uh, how did they help you to do that? Gives advice is basically technical advice and uh, general advice as well. Uh, no, nothing, nothing like uh, it's no rocket science there. It was more like logical uh, things. Some of them we already figured out by ourselves. Some of them we hadn't. Some of them were about the SDKs issues and stuff like that. More, I'm pretty sure most of those, uh, or even 100% of those questions, are already answered publicly right now in the moment. But of course, it was. Uh, those days it was a little bit new for everyone but I'm, I'm sure everything is, is available on the forums or on, on the website right now so nothing I will actually figure cover some of this already some how to settle the UI how to remove the latency how to uh, make the game adapted for virtual reality and stuff like that it's, it's new for everyone including them of course they're less new than everyone else but it's still new for them okay? It's, uh, it's, it's not even available, I mean, even those guys, Oculus guys, or Project Conscious guys, haven't played any game prepared for Oculus on a final consumer device. There's no consumer, final consumer device, there's no finally prepared game. So all of, all of us, we're experimenting, we're trying to, to, to achieve there both as quick as possible, that's important. You want to be there, you want to be there with a cheap enough product for people to be able to buy it. You want to be there to the good enough product so people will be buying it and will be having fun and they will buy the better next version. Otherwise, you just spoil the whole idea for everyone. So, uh, in the same time, you need games to be there. Games need enough hardware to be there, to be prepared. So, it's like, uh, it's, it's like, exploring the whole new world it, it, it's not it's not like they gives us some 
uh, diamonds of knowledge which are concealed and nobody knows it. It's like more we were talking and uh, helping each other and stuff like that. But they provide you uh, early access to TK, yeah. right? And That's what. You talked about TK3? Uh, we haven't talked yet. I'm, we're gonna. You meet. mentioned it earlier that TK3 is coming, but. Uh, it will be there. I mean, I, I, I haven't violated any NDA. We haven't, uh, I haven't get any hardware DK3. I mean, but you understand that DK3 is not going to be released, right? Oh, so uh, there will be at least uh, DK3, which can be DK3 and the consumer device at oh, the same okay. time, or it can be DK3 and then consumer device. But they're going to be at least one next iteration. So. Uh, I'm saying that, uh, according to what I know, they're going to have a better frame rate, uh, uh, vertical C helps, yeah, uh, less latency and a better resolution. But everybody knows that. I mean, yes, they awesome. they always saying that that DK2 is a step ahead, but not the, uh, the final thing. So uh, uh, I, I I wasn't I wasn't. They have provided DK2. We have even pre DK2 prototype. Which is under NDA, and I cannot show it. It's not here anyway. So, but we would, we were, work, we are working with them on a, on making a game for. That's the part they they're helping us because we can be DK one we received like everybody else. I backed them up on the Kickstarter, and then we get a few months after they start delivering. So that was the. But then they uh, noticed that the game supported, it and we start working together. And DK two we really we received of course earlier than. Uh, uh, it was not not long, not much earlier, a little bit earlier than first people, like a few weeks maybe, two weeks, I don't know, a little bit earlier. <laughs> so it's not, a, it's not a big deal. <laughs> and the reason is because they are, even don't have that hardware. Yeah. They make it and as soon as they have it, basically they start yeah. delivering. As soon as they have enough to, to deliver, they start delivering it. So it's not they, like they are hiding they just okay. We are like a little bit ahead of probably, but just a little bit, a few days maybe. Yeah. Not not a big deal because they wait, went for wait for another enough devices to to start uh, logistically wise. It doesn't make sense to uh, distribute one by one. You need uh, bigger bigger amounts. So it's, and before that they themselves they haven't had it. So. Okay, gentlemen, thank, thank you. you. Very much for your